There have been a number of versions how the band has got its name. How did it really happen? This is closest to the truth that I think happened was we didn't have a name. It was the only thing that, hey, wait a minute, I thought we were playing there. And then it suddenly dawned on us that that must be our, our name. <laughs> Once you're called Mental as anything, you can't really change it to anything else. That's great. Now, the Mental scored a number four hit with If You Leave Me, Can I Come To? We're going to listen to that shortly. You followed that up with Too Many Times, which got a number six on the charts, but gained you international exposure when you toured North America with Men at Work. Too Many Times is one of my dad's all time favourites. How much truth was it to the lyrics to that one? <laughs> uh, interesting. Um, that, that song was... Um, I, I wrote that after probably a big night. Um, John Swan, and uh, the singer, and, uh, and I guess we were pretty hard. And then I, I, I woke up the next morning with a bit of a headache from imbibing too much. And, uh, and then I wrote this song about having a hangover. Well, let's have a listen now. Here's a mentals double play with If You Leave Me, Can I Come Too? And they'll be followed with Too Many Times. I've had enough of that. had their one and only hit in 1964 with Romeo and Juliet. You guys rejigged this number and it came up a tree. Firstly, would you agree with that? And secondly, how did you choose that particular song to cover? Martin reckons that he did he, he just listened to it a few times and we, we recorded it so quickly he didn't really know the words. So I think he mumbles a few. The ones he doesn't know, he just mumbles. <laughs> but it's great. It's a, it goes down so well live, this one. It really is. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's, I think it's one of the, sh it's the shortest song we, we play. We're going to that one right now. Here's the mentors with Romeo and Juliet.
Great, love that one. There must be countless people who would personally relate to your song. He's just no good for you. Please enlighten us with the background as how this song was developed. Uh, originally, I um, had the inspiration for writing that um, about the, uh, the, the, the idea of domestic violence, I think, but um, I also wanted to get, get the idea of the, the old... Somebody shouldn't be hanging around with somebody who's doing them <laughs> who are really are no good for them. But on, over the years, a lot of people have come up to me individually and said, oh, you know, that song you, is just no good for you. I... I heard that song and it really inspired me. I took your advice, so I got a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really bad about that now. Oh, jeez. Here we go now with He's Just No Good For You. You've been kicked in the teeth Now we're going back for more Come on with me Get out of the mess you're in You take your life Oh, that's wonderful. Well, let's finish up with the medals version of Working for the Man. Greedy Smith, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. I look forward to catching up and seeing you perform at the Echuca Workers Club on Saturday the 10th of March. Thanks for taking the time to entertain us here today and for giving Lily and the opportunity to speak to one of Australia's true music legends. Oh, thanks, BJ. Thanks, Lily. That's great. Hey, now, you better listen to me, every one of you. We've got a lot of to do forget about your women and you want to can today you're working for the man